Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. Now the people at Temgo sent me this beautiful 300 amp hour battery and it's a pretty cool battery if you're thinking about adding one to your home system or to your RV. Maybe think about this one because it has a few features that some other batteries might not have. One of them is that there's an LCD screen on the top that you can monitor what's happening inside the battery. You can also monitor it using an app. And perhaps the most important feature on a day like today is it has a self-heating feature. So we're going to go over the battery. We're going to test that self-heating feature, see if it actually works. So stay tuned. Let's get into it. So this battery is a big boy at 300 amps or 3840 watt hours and i'll put the dimensions on the screen it weighs about 65 pounds you know that is a pretty heavy battery but you know what it's a perfect time to illustrate why lead acid batteries are a thing of the past for most of us actually we should be thinking about swapping out our rv batteries for lithium iron phosphate batteries and i'll show you why remember this is 300 amp hours 65 pounds Our kids just recently bought an RV, shiny RV, it's sitting in our driveway. This is the battery that was included with their RV. It's a regular lead acid battery, it's 50 amp hours, and I'm sure it's very low quality. So at 50 amp hours, you would need six of these to add up to the same power of this one, right? This battery, you can fully discharge to 0% thousands of times, over 5,000 times, and you won't affect the performance of it at all. This one though, you can't discharge below 50%. If you do, you're going to damage the battery. So that 300 amp hour that you get with six of these really only is 150 amp hours of usable power, right? So it becomes way worse than that. Six of these weighs about 288 pounds. So it's way worse when you have to add 12 of these to make up for the capacity of this one lithium iron phosphate battery. 12 of these, what would that be? 575, 572 pounds? A crazy number anyway, I'll put it on the screen, my math is weak. But you would need 12 of these to match up the power capacity of this one. So unless you have a very specific reason for this kind of technology, lead acid or AGM or whatever, this is the one you should be looking for in the future when you need to swap out your RV batteries. So why don't we come in closer, I'll show you that LCD screen, that's a really cool feature and we'll go over the app as well. So really nice to have this LCD screen included if you're the type of person who doesn't want to bother with an app or you don't have a battery monitoring system in your RV, this is a great way to take a quick look and keep track of what's going on in your battery. Right now we're at 52%. It's in standby mode. As you can see, it tells you different things like current, how much voltage is in the battery, things like that. It says we can run this for 999 hours and 12 minutes before it's empty. You go to the second screen, more information tells you whether your charging system is on, things like that talks about the BMS and you go to the third screen that tells you the voltage in each individual cell and as you can see they're actually very well balanced auto balancing of course so it's nice to have this built in makes things much more simple for those of us who just want to take a quick peek at the battery see what's going on now the Bluetooth is very convenient connects up super fast tells you some of the same information that the LCD screen gives you. It tells you volts, things like that. It tells you how cold the battery is today and that's key today because we're going to check out the self-heating feature when we charge. So as you can see the internal temperature of this battery is minus 3.3 Celsius. So a very nice app you can connect multiple batteries up to it. This is the one we're looking at right now. Inside this Temgo 300 amp hour battery, there's a very sophisticated BMS or battery management system that will optimize performance, but even more importantly, it's going to keep you safe. So it protects you and the battery from things like 
overcharging, over discharging, over current, short circuits, things like that. So these are very safe to use. You can even put them inside your RV, inside the living space. They're solid state. There's no gases to escape or anything like that. So it's very nice to see that the BMS is keeping you and the battery safe. And it also operates the low temp cutoff and it also operates the self heating feature. So let's talk about self heating feature when it comes to this battery. First of all, why do you need a self heating feature? Well, you can use these batteries to a very low temp, about minus 20 C or minus four Fahrenheit. So that's not the issue. The issue is when you try to charge these up at temps below zero or below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you will damage the battery if you attempt to charge it and it actually tries to charge at those temps. So that's where the BMS comes in. It has that low temperature cutoff. It won't allow you to charge and it will also enact the self heating system. So the way the self heating system is kind of confusing for some people. I've even seen some YouTubers say that the battery itself heats itself up, brings it up to a proper temperature to allow for charging. That's not really true. The self heating feature comes about when you try and charge it, it captures some of that power from whatever source you're charging the battery from starts up two heating pads or at the bottom of this battery and that's how the battery itself heats up allowing you to charge now when the battery gets up to about five degrees celsius it's going to start that charging process so right now we're sitting at about minus three degrees celsius inside this battery so we have to actually raise the battery temp internally up about eight degrees before it will actually start charging. So that's what we're gonna to test today. I'm gonna to hook up my battery charger. We're gonna see if it starts to charge the battery because it shouldn't. It should actually start heating the battery first. So that's gonna be very interesting. I'm always amazed when I do this with different batteries and it works and I'm sure this is gonna to work today with this 10 volt battery. So let's start. So the app is saying that this battery is minus 3.1 Celsius interior, so we can't charge this, obviously. So we're gonna hook it up, heat it up, and charge it up. Okay, so I have a pretty inexpensive battery charger here. But what you require is at least a 10 amp power source to kickstart those heating pads. And this is a 20 amp charger, so we'll connect it up. Once I connect it up, I'll take you in closely and we'll look at that LCD screen, see if the battery's charging. We'll take a look at the app, see if the battery's charging because we do not want the battery to start charging yet. Okay. battery is not charging which is good to see but there is some power coming out of that battery charger the battery is still in standby let's take a close look so here we go the battery charger is running obviously but the battery is not charging we're still in standby so what's happening is the heating pads are being Heat it up and we're bringing the battery up to temperature. Let's check out that app and we can actually see that happening. So if you remember, we were below three degrees Celsius when we started this test and now we're sitting at 2.8 degrees Celsius. So internally it is rising in temperature and I'm telling you something, it's not getting any warmer out here. So those heating pads are really doing the job. It's gonna take quite a while for that to heat up to four or five degrees Celsius, and only then will it start to charge. 2.7. Obviously this is gonna take some time to raise the temperature of this battery up to a point where we can charge it. I'm gonna keep track of it here using the app. Right now we're sitting at 2.4 degrees Celsius. So it is coming up slowly. I'll come back when we get close to the operating temperature where we can charge and we'll show it kicking over to a charge state. 
So let's try something here. Let's take a few measurement readings because the heating pads are in the bottom of the battery, right? So let's take a reading at the top. 33 degrees Fahrenheit. The side. 28. Let's take a reading on the bottom. 53 degrees Fahrenheit. So 53 degrees Fahrenheit down here. It was about 30 up top, I think. About 34. So that shows the heating pads have kicked in and we're heating things up inside. We are at 30 degrees internal and we have to raise this internal temperature to 5 degrees Celsius or 41 degrees Fahrenheit before we can start charging. All right, success. We're charging now. I'll bring you in. You can take a look at the LCD screen, but we're at about 42 degrees now. Perfect time for this thing to start charging up. We were at 52%. We're still at 52%, but we are starting to charge now. That's awesome. So that self-heating feature did work as it's supposed to. So here we are, we're at 53% now and we are charging. If you recall before, it was just saying that it was in standby while that battery was heating up. So that's awesome. We're at 43.1 degrees Fahrenheit internally and the Temgo app agrees with that. So that's awesome. So one thing about the heating pads installed in this Temgo battery is that they do require at least 10 amps of power to engage. So depending on the day, you're likely not going to get that from a solar system if you're depending on that to charge the batteries. You'd have to be on shore power as I am right now. This is only a 20 amp charger. So what happened was when it was heating up the battery, 10 amps of the power was taken off that just to heat up the battery. When the batteries heated up, a full 20 amps were used to charge the 10 volt battery, which it's doing now. So thanks for stopping by, I do appreciate it and I'm glad we had a nice cold day so I could demonstrate the self-heating feature of this battery. You know, lithium iron phosphates have been a real game changer for us when it comes to our RV and I know that word is overused but with the BMS installed on this, it does all the thinking and the work for you. You can discharge these right down to zero, charge them right back up again. You don't have to worry about them and babysit them like you did when you were using lead acid batteries. At least me anyway, I was always over discharging them and damaging them and they were not there when I needed them. But lithium iron phosphate batteries have been excellent for me. And this one from Temgo, I really love because it has that LCD screen and of course that self heating feature and the app. So I'm gonna leave a link to Temgo. Check them out if you need to put new batteries in your RV if you're setting up a home system really solid battery. Thanks for watching everybody. Do appreciate it. Bye for now.